I went to the Railmakers Conference about four years ago, and I went with my son Nathan because he loved speculative fiction. And I thought, I'm just here along for a ride. Well, I saw my friend Steve Lobby there, and I was just amazed by all the great new writers, how much they supported each other, and I was commenting to Steve like, this is amazing. And Steve looked at me with a twinkle in his eye. He said, come to the dark side. And I laughed it off because I thought, oh, I write World War II, I write Amish. I can't imagine writing speculative fiction. But then I started reading it, and the more I read it, the more I wanted to write it. I love speculative fiction. Ever since I was a kid, I was reading all sorts of different uh, stories in that realm already. Uh, one of my favorites is The Door Within, and that one really set me down the path of, oh wow, you can actually have this amazing, fantastical world and have a strong Christian message at the same time. So that book in particular opened that eye for me, and ever since then, I wanted to write something of my own. I've been to the Czech Republic many times, and in Prague, there is this tale of this creature named Gollum, who was created from the clay at the edge of the Vltava River, created by a man named Rabbi Lowe. Well, this has been in the back of my mind for years, and one day I was actually sweeping near my dining room where I have a bookshelf of books about Prague, and I saw that golem, and it just came to me like, what if we wrote a book set in World War II um, based on this tale of the golem from the 15th century? And I turned, and Nathan happened to be over, and I'm like, Nathan, what do you think of this idea? And he liked it, and the rest is history. So after my mom had that idea of, let's bring the golem back, let's have it in World War II, my first thought during that time was, okay, we got sky captains in the world of tomorrow, let's do golem, but make it steampunk. Instead of just clay and just have this you know, big lumbering clay creature, let's have a steampunk mechanical creature that there is some clay there, I won't spoil it, there is some still clay to the golem, but it is a very much a mechanical steampunk being. So that was what brought the idea from just golem to a steampunk golem, which eventually led to the story of Breath of Bones. Nathan and I, for our riding time together, we would go away for the weekend, we would have a cabin in the woods, we would hire an executive chef to come in mom, and cook for us. Mom, mom, tell them the truth. <laughs> okay, so usually after Nathan got off of work, we would like scramble to try to get time together to talk about the idea. Then we would give ourselves deadlines such as we both have to write a thousand words before we go to bed at night. Was that better? That's better. That's more, the, more like it. I love writing. My favorite thing is to sit down with a big cup of coffee with some caramel macchiato creamer. But usually I'm not at my desk, usually I'm on the couch or in the front seat of our car as we drive to some event. So most of the time when it comes to my writing fuel, I just have a lot of water. Which means also a lot of time to stretch between those scenes that I'm writing. Favorite hobby of mine is I'm a huge nerd, so I like to play trading card games. So I will often go to card shops with my friends and compete in tournaments or just have casual matches. You know, I like to see here we have Sauron from Lord of the Rings. He is uh, one of my favorite decks I like to use. And uh, so yeah, that is something I get to enjoy with friends and meet new people. Okay, my tips on co-authoring, first, even if you don't agree, hear everything out and see if you can find a common place to come together. Sometimes Nathan would have an idea, I'm like, that is too far off, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, actually, we can make this work. So we have kind of an open mind. Also, um, I tend to get a little bit crazy with the editing process, so just reminding the other person that they're doing a really, really good job and um, point out all the things that they're doing well. 
so it doesn't become overwhelming when the other person comes in and edits or changes things. And then finally, I just loved that Nathan, because he's more in the speculative fiction realm, that he would just um, come up with ideas that were things that I never would have come up with. Um, and so that was pretty fun. As a mom and a homeschooling mom, I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. Top three tips for co-authoring. Number one, don't assume anything. Even if you already planned out the plot, don't assume that your co-author is imagining it the same way you are. Number two is be ready and willing to build upon what they have written. Maybe they have a really cool idea that you're not quite sure about at first. Really give it a chance to think about it and explore the idea. And uh, at least in my case, it caused a lot of really cool ideas to be born that I would have never thought of by myself. And number three, you know, writing with my mom, who was a very experienced author, uh, I was she was able to give me a lot of tips and it was up to me to be able to work those tips into my writing process and kind of learn from that. Growing up, I loved going to the library. I my favorite was Little House on the Prairie and so my favorite genre was kind of prairie and family and sweetness and togetherness and now I'm writing about golem robots and assassinations and all this World War II stuff but I will say the key is just that sparking the interest in those books and getting me to enter those worlds has really played a big part in my writing today. If I were to invite the golem for a board game night, I have the perfect game, actually. See here, Century Golem Edition. It is a popular game and they remade it with cool golems as the art. So even if the golem might not understand how to play the game, he could at least enjoy the pictures of his friends. Yes, we did visit a lot of the places, such as the Charles Bridge and many other amazing places in the Czech Republic. In fact, my mother loved it so much that she would go off exploring one time, leaving me behind for four hours and not even realizing that I was gone. I thought he was with my husband, to tell you the truth. My husband thought he was with me, and Nathan, he was like 12 at the time. All on my own, in a foreign country where I did not speak the language. You survived. <laughs> Whenever I get stuck on a scene, it's always helpful for me to take a step back and look at the story as a whole. Think, where am I right now? Where does the story end? And what do I need to put in right here and right now to reach there? You know. What, where do this character need to go? What do they need to learn? What is an important part for them to reach their end of their character arc? By kind of taking a step back and evaluating the entire story, it allows me to know, okay, I need to put this in right now so that I can do this later. If Katarina and Yosef were coming to Little Rock, first we would go to the Museum of Discovery. I think Yosef would be amazed with all the scientific hands-on things. He would probably be running around just like a little kid, checking everything out. And then Katarina, I would actually take her to the Central School Museum. So in 1957, the, with desegregation at the Central School, they did not let African American students into the school. They have tons of history news report reports and as a reporter she would find that fascinating we have lots of pets around the goyer house this is baxter and he is one of our mini black golden doodles 
We were on a speaking trip. I was on a speaking trip to South Dakota. My two daughters were with us and they said we should go to the pet store. We drove home from South Dakota with two puppies. We also have a dog who is half Corgi and half Jack Russell, which means he just looks like a very fat Jack Russell Terrier. And then my daughter also has a cockatiel named Charlie and he's in our dining room. And so we always have Charlie around. I have Mocha here. Mocha was very helpful during the writing process because anytime I get stressed out or get tired or get stuck on something, I can just take a short break and Mocha is always ready to play or cuddle and uh, she gets me re-energized and refocused on uh, what I want to write next. When it came to writing, one of the most difficult things was that I have never written steampunk before. Um, there was so much technology and kind of the pace was a little bit different of how things needed to go. And so I leaned in a lot, talked to Nathan about things, and then got really creative. So I started by just adding a little steampunk, but then as I went along, I fell in love with it and added more and more, but it was definitely a learning challenge. If you're looking for a book that has both true events from World War II with some steampunk, fun, exciting, chase, blow up scenes <laughs> thrown in, <laughs> then you need to check out Breath of Bones. And thank you so much for checking out the book, buying the book, spreading the words to your friends. Thank you for listening to our interview today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.